Most mouthwashes, terrible, terrible for your oral health. Mouth breathing, bad for oral health, bad for teeth, bad, bad, bad. There's just no question about it. Creating one's own mouthwash with a little bit of baking soda, some hydrogen peroxide and water does not seem like a good idea. I think it's very important to discuss the do nots that every dentist and periodontist I spoke to agreed on. The quick list of bad for your teeth, bad for your mouth are alcohol, what we're talking about is the disruption that alcohol creates to the microbiome and the way that it alters the pH of your saliva and places the mouth and the teeth into a demineralization state. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink at all, but the cutoff seems to be two alcohol-based drinks per week. The second thing on the not good for us list for sake of oral health are stimulants. Stimulants like Adderall, Vyvanse, et cetera. Basically any drug that increases epinephrine and norepinephrine are going to have a negative effect on oral health. Why would stimulants cause such disruption in oral health? Well, there are really two reasons. There's a chemical reason and there's a mechanical reason. The chemical reason is that stimulants change the pH of your saliva, making the mouth more acidic, which makes strep mutans and other bacteria more capable of creating cavities down into the teeth. They take your mouth and your teeth from that remineralization state into a demineralization state the mechanical reason. Stimulants encourage mouth breathing. Mouth breathing, bad for oral health, bad for teeth, bad, bad, bad. There's just no question about it. Watch somebody who's on a high dose of stimulants and they tend to mouth breathe because of the shifts in autonomic nervous system function, they tend to be mouth breathers. So it's the drying of the mouth that also shifts the mouth from that remineralization mode to demineralization mode. If you can be a nasal breather, be a nasal breather, please. I'm not saying don't ever breathe through your mouth, but as much as possible, try and keep the oral cavity moist and closed. Smoking, cigarettes, and yes, also cannabis. And yes, vaping does this too. It's so funny, anytime I talk about smoking being bad, people are like, well, what about cannabis? Then people ask, well, what about vaping? Vaping's not as bad as smoking, right? That's what they say. And the truth is that vaping is terrible for your oral health as well. Is it as bad as smoking? Probably not but it's bad for a bunch of other reasons. Sugar is not good for oral health. Acidity is bad for the mouth. Does that mean that you should never consume a lemon or drinking water with lemon in it or carbonated drinks or sodas or tea or anything that has acidic flavor? No. Likewise, should you completely avoid ingesting any kind of sugar because strep mutans love sugar? No. The real truth is it's the amount of time that the mouth is exposed to that acid. So if they're gonna drink it, drink it over the course of five, 10, 15, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then be done with it. Rinse out the mouth with a little bit of water and try and clear out that acidity. It's not about completely avoiding acid foods or sugary foods or acidic drinks. Most mouthwashes, terrible, terrible for your oral health, especially those containing alcohol. They deplete certain components of the mucosal lining of the mouth and they disrupt the healthy components of the oral microbiome. If you are somebody who are using mouthwashes to freshen their breath and to kill off additional bacteria in the mouth, I encourage you to try and find a mouthwash that is not alcohol-based and that is not a strong antiseptic, or that if it is an antiseptic, that it's not alcohol-based. Creating one's own mouthwash with a little bit of baking soda, some hydrogen peroxide and water does not seem like a good idea. When I started to get some pretty bad canker sores and someone gave me the recommendation to use a little bit of baking soda dissolved in some water and a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and to use that as a oral rinse and of course then to spit it out. And I did that and actually what happened to me is I got almost quarter size ulcers on the roof of my mouth and on the sides of my mouth. It took those little canker sores, turned them into full-blown ulcers. I know this because when I stopped using it, those healed up almost immediately. And then when I spoke to some dentists and periodontists, they said, oh yeah, yeah, hydrogen peroxide is just far too abrasive for the mouth cavity. That said, it does seem that creating a high salt solution, okay? So taking some salt, putting it into water, dissolving it, and then finding the point at which it won't quite dissolve because the concentration of sodium is just high enough and using that as dental rinse, so putting your mouth and swishing it around and then spitting it out and it's gonna taste very salty and then taking a swig of water, you know, just plain water and then swishing it around and then spitting it out, that actually provides a really nice milieu for the production of healthy mouth bacteria.